His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the occasion of the McLaren team's victory at the Formula One Dutch Grand Prix 2024. His Royal Highness affirmed that the McLaren team's achievement as to the kingdom's record in car racing and affirmed the dedication of Bahrain's cadres to fulfilling the aspirations and visions of His Majesty the King for the development of Bahrain. His Royal Highness said that Team Bahrain's keenness to raise the kingdom's status in international forums stems from its continuous efforts to fulfill the visions and aspirations of His Majesty, turning them into tangible successes for Bahrain's present and future. He added that this demonstrates the team's dedication for their nation, working together as one team through planning, execution and follow-up to achieve accomplishments that bolster Bahrain's standing in various competitions. His Royal Highness wished His Majesty the King abundant health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the personal representative of His Majesty and President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness congratulated His Majesty on McLaren winning first place in the Formula One Dutch Grand Prix 2024 as part of the Formula One World Championship of Cars. His Highness expressed pride in this honorable victory thanks to the generous care, interest and continuous support that this global sport enjoys from His Majesty, which reflects the prestigious position of the kingdom among world countries and affirms its status in this global race and represents a new asset added to the record of achievements of the kingdom during His Majesty's prosperous era. He wished His Majesty good health and happiness and lead the kingdom and its people towards further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited Circuit Zandvoort in the Netherlands to attend the Formula One Dutch Grand Prix 2024. His Royal Highness witnessed McLaren's victory and extended congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion. He highlighted how Bahrain's successive global achievements, including motorsports, cement its prominent position on the global sports map, a testament to His Majesty's visionary leadership and aspirations for the kingdom's development and prosperity. His Royal Highness commended the McLaren team for for their outstanding performance and for being crowned the champions of the Dutch Grand Prix. He extended his gratitude to the Minister of Finance and National Economy and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Mumtalakat, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, as well as members of Mumtalakat's board and employees for their commitment to meeting the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals through its successful investments, which drive economic diversification efforts. His Royal Highness was accompanied by the Minister of Finance and National Economy and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Mumtalakat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the personal representative of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on McLaren winning first place at the Formula One Dutch Grand Prix 2024. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, affirmed that Decision 899 of 2024 on issuing regulatory requirements in housing project areas and the guide regulating them contributes to the possibility of expanding the building areas of housing units and residential plots. She added that the aim of the regulatory requirements is to increase citizens' benefit for, from the opportunities for expansion within the housing units in an effort to address a number of recurring building violations and work to convert them into legal amendments in accordance with the regulatory requirements. She stressed that the regulatory requirements came in response to the joint coordination between the executive and legislative authorities and after studying numerous cases submitted to the ministry and citizen suggestions through the Tawassal application. The minister pointed out that issuing the regulatory requirements decision is complementary to decision 93 of 2023 on issuing regulatory requirements for construction in various regions of the kingdom. In an affirmation of the shared responsibility towards the Bahraini family, and based on the advancement of housing areas and projects, the Cabinet approved the Memorandum of the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning regarding the draft decision to amend the regulatory requirements for construction and housing project areas in order to contribute to the expansion of the building areas of residential units and plots and to regulate the requirements of residential building areas in addition to the housing areas whose features have not yet been determined. The official Gazette clarified the details of these amendments, which aim to maximize citizens' benefits from the opportunities for expansions within the vicinity of housing units in an effort to address a number of recurring building violations and to work on converting them into legal amendments according to the regulatory requirements that are applied to all housing units and buildings. The first of these regulatory requirements 
was related to the areas of residential units, while the second was related to housing plots. These requirements came considering that this housing option was recently expanded within the housing plot service provided by the ministry. The basis for issuing these requirements is to respond to the joint coordination between the executive and legislative authorities after studying numerous cases submitted to the ministry and citizen suggestions through the National System for Complaints and Suggestions Tawassal, as well as the offices of the representatives and municipal councils, where the comments were studied by a unified government work team from the Ministry of Housing, the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, and the Urban Planning Authority. The meetings of the Coordination and Follow-up Committee and the Joint Steering Committee for Cooperation between the Government of Bahrain and the United Nations Agencies was held. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, affirmed Bahrain's commitment under the leadership of His Majesty the King to strengthen cooperation and strategic partnership with the UN to consolidate international peace and security. The meetings reviewed the progress of cooperation and partnership between Bahrain and UN agencies, highlighting key achievements, particularly in education, combating human trafficking and environmental sustainability through a number of initiatives. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah expressed pride in Bahrain's pioneering achievements in democracy, development and human rights. He highlighted Bahrain's initiatives and partnership with international and regional organizations to promote the values of tolerance, peaceful coexistence, human solidarity, the empowerment of women and youth and support for sustainable development. The resident coordinator of UN activities in Bahrain, Khalid al maqwad praised the constructive cooperation and the strong partnership between Bahrain and the international organization in laying the foundations of security and peace, fostering dialogue among civilizations and cultures, and respecting human rights. The Ministry of Works continues development and construction work, which funding from the Saudi Fund for Development and the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development. More in this report. Within the framework of improving the environmental situation and wildlife in the Kingdom of Bahrain in general and in Tubli Bay in particular, the Tubli Wastewater Treatment Plant Phase 4 project is one of the Ministry's important strategic projects in the sanitation sector, as it will raise the performance of the Tubli Center for the production of treated water and increase the production of treated water used in irrigation and agricultural beautification by absorbing the increasing wastewater flows coming to the plant as a result of urban development and population increase. The project aims to achieve sustainable development for this sector and provide the best services to all regions of the kingdom and a healthy environment for citizens and residents. The project, which is being implemented with funding from the Saudi Fund for Development and the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, will increase the capacity of the current plant from 200,000 cubic meters to 400,000 cubic meters per day. The Ministry of Works has been keen to implement the project, taking into account occupational health and safety requirements at work sites through diligent follow-up and taking all occupational safety and security measures as more than 9,356,092 hours were completed without a work injury, which reflects the commitment to occupational safety and security standards. Temkin announced the adoption of a whistleblowing policy as part of a comprehensive plan to improve control procedures, activate the principles of transparency, and strengthen control. On the occasion, the CEO of Temkin, Maha Mufiz, affirmed that this step stems from the belief and the need to activate community partnership to enhance oversight and preserve public fund by opening direct channels for all customers to communicate with Temkin in complete confidentiality. More on this report. The whistleblowing policy announced by Tim Keen is part of its comprehensive plan to improve control procedures with the aim of strengthening cooperation and mutual trust between Tim Keen and all members of the community, whether beneficiaries or non-beneficiaries of the support programs provided. The plan included expanding the channels dedicated to reporting violations. A special webpage was launched to report violations and abuses related to support programs in order to follow up on reports submitted in complete confidentiality. This plan came after the formation of a team specialized in monitoring individual programs to detect any cases of illegal employment or manipulation of wages. A number of Tim Keen's employees were authorized as judicial officers to strengthen the legal framework followed in the monitoring and follow-up procedures and develop work mechanisms between Tim Keen and the concerned authorities to take the necessary measures regarding the cases detected. This step comes as part of Tim Keen's ongoing efforts to follow up on the optimal use of support programs and encourage those affected to report any violations or suspicions, in addition to updating control procedures, doubling inspection visits and increasing integration with partner systems to limit any violations, abuses or misuse of support. 
Gulf Air completed the European Aviation Safety Agency AASA audit process enabling it to expand maintenance services to more regional and European airlines operating in Bahrain. This qualifies Gulf Air to maintain its Airbus and Boeing aircraft including engines. The certification allows the airline to expand maintenance services to more regional and European airlines at Bahrain International Airport. The two-year audit ensures that Gulf Air's maintenance systems and activities comply with European civil aviation regulations and standards as well as additional requirements for organizations outside the EU. The Arab Parliament Speaker Adel Asumi participated in the 35th session of the International Conference of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs in Cairo under the patronage of the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi under the title The Role of Women in Building Awareness. He praised His Majesty the King's unlimited support for Bahraini women, which has strengthened their presence as an active partner in the development process witnessed by Bahrain. Al Asumi praised the efforts of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, to achieve the royal vision into policies and programs through her presidency of the Supreme Council for Women, which introduced many important initiatives to support and strengthen the presence of women in all fields and increase community awareness on the importance of their role and status. In conjunction with the back-to-school season, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce continues its awareness and control campaign for the commercial sector and consumers. The Ministry called on the commercial sector to abide by the application regulations and laws and to cooperate with the inspection teams to ensure a safe and sustainable commercial environment. To speak more about this, we are joined by the Director of Inspection at the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Munal Alawi, who delivered the following statement. First of all, thank you for having me, and I wish all students a great start to this academic year. Our campaign titled with the back to school season we are here by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, it actually combines both inspection and awareness efforts. The campaign aims to build a shopping environment based on trust and transparency as we shared awareness messages on the ministry's social media platforms to reach to both the businesses and the consumers. The response from the school supply stores has been great. They also displayed messages about the smart and sustainable shoppings. These include tips like setting a family budget ahead of the time and comparing products before buying and other messages. We carried out the inspection campaign across all the governates and visited over 100 stores related to the back to school season, including stationeries, bags and shoes stores and uniform tailoring shops. Thankfully, the results were very positive and showed a clear commitment to the laws and regulation. We also saw a wide variety of products, giving consumers plenty of choices in both types and prices. While we did find a few minor issues or violations, uh, uh, like the price not being displayed on some items, but uh, these were corrected on the spot. The good news is that we didn't come across any major problems like price uh, manipulation or discrepancies between the listed price and the actual price. Overall, I can say the results were encouraging, and I want to emphasize that we are always here to protect everyone with our commitment extending beyond this campaign period. 